Were you aware that Easter is on March 31st this year? I wasn't until just yesterday. <laughs> For some reason, I was thinking it was in April again this year, you know, because sometimes it's anywhere from like the end of March to the end of April. It's after the first full moon, the Sunday after the first full moon. Why am I talking so fast? I'm not sure. Excitement. Anyway, what are you making for dessert on Easter? You don't know? I'm here to help. Today, we're showing you our ultimate favorite spring Easter dessert. Some of them even can be summery. Actually, you can have these anytime, but they're perfect for spring and especially Easter Sunday. <laughs> Y'all hold on tight for this one. There's lots of good stuff in here, like lots of stuff I wish that I had right now in here to eat. We're gonna start with one that we just made yesterday, Blackberry Preserves Pound Cake. When we get it in the oven, we're gonna go on a spring desserts adventure. So y'all stay tuned. I'm sure you'll find something that will make the perfect ending for your special Sunday supper. to this afternoon in the kitchen. We're about to turn all of this into a pound cake. We're gonna start with the butter. We have two and a half sticks softened. And the sugar, we need two and a quarter cup. We're gonna cream this together and I'm gonna be getting the eggs ready. After we plug up the KitchenAid. It's looking nice and fluffy. We let it go for about four minutes. Now we're gonna add the eggs one at a time. Okay, in this bowl, we're gonna mix two cups and a fourth of a cup of all-purpose flour, and we need three-fourths of a teaspoon of salt. And we have three-fourths of a cup of buttermilk in here. We're gonna alternately add this in to the butter mixture. Now we're gonna add these blackberry preserves. You can use any flavor of preserves you wanna use. Strawberry, blackberry, raspberry, apricot, any preserves. We need a third of a cup. We're gonna do a heaping third of a cup. There you go, Cece. You can use the spoon to scrape that out of there. Manly's playing with his walkie-talkies. The last thing we're gonna put in is a teaspoon of vanilla. Okay, we've got the bunt pan, freezed and floured. We're gonna spread this evenly around here and it's gonna go in the oven with the oven cold. Once we put it in, then we'll start preheating it to 300 and it's gonna bake for about an hour or so. All right, so we got this in the oven. It ended up taking, I think about an hour and 20 minutes total before it was done. While it's baking though, we're gonna go back in time. We'll start with the farmhouse lemon meringue pie. And I'm gonna have all these videos linked down below for y'all. That way, if you wanna go and watch the whole video, that's also where you'll be able to find the recipes. First, we need three tablespoons of lemon juice. Before we get the lemon juice, we're gonna get some of the lemon peel. We need two teaspoons of grated lemon peel. Okay, we need two tablespoons of melted butter. So I'm gonna tell y'all what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna dump our little lemon peel right here and we'll melt the butter in this and then add that back in. 
Okay, so we've got the melted butter. Now we need three tablespoons of lemon juice. We're just gonna, let's see. We'll squeeze it into this bowl. I'm just gonna eyeball it. It's really soft now, the lemon is, since we zested it first, so it's really easy just to squeeze it in here. There we go. Now, I think that's all we need in this bowl. Lot of stuff right here. Um, and if you wanna put the food coloring, this is where you put that in, but yeah, we're skipping that. In the pot, we're putting two thirds of a cup of sugar, one cup of cold water, a quarter cup of cornstarch, and an eighth of a teaspoon of salt. Okay, we're gonna turn this on the medium and we're gonna bring it to a boil. While we're waiting for it to come to a boil, I'm gonna go ahead and separate four eggs. So we'll put the yolks here and the egg whites over here. I'm taking out the pie crust down here because it is ready. We are just about to come to a boil here. Getting nice and thick. Okay, we're gonna remove this from the heat. We're gonna take just a little bit of it out of the pot here, just about a fourth of a cup to mix with our egg yolks to temper them. Now we're gonna add this into the pot, return it to the heat, and it's gonna cook on medium low for about three minutes. You wanna stay right here with it, whisking it or it will burn on the bottom. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and put in the lemon mixture now. The lemon juice, butter, and lemon zest. Get that mixed in and this is where it starts smelling good. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna pour this into the pie shell. Okay, so now we make the meringue. So all we're gonna do is beat these egg whites until they're just about ready. Right when they start to form peaks, we're gonna add in a couple of tablespoons of sugar and then mix that in until it forms stiff peaks and then we're ready to spread it on the pie. Spread this on top. The key to keeping your meringue from shrinking is to make sure that you spread it all the way to the edge of the pie crust. You don't leave any open spots. And sometimes you still get a little shrinkage, but most of the time it'll stay where it's supposed to stay. And this is some mile high meringue right here. All right, now the decision of what do we want the meringue to look like on top? Do we want the peaks? or the waves. I've been liking the wave look lately with any cream topping or meringue topping, so I think we're gonna go with waves. And we'll just go around and do some little swoops like this. There we go. Going in the oven for about five to 10 minutes just until it browns really good on top. So this lemon meringue pie has a really subtle lemon taste. It's actually a little more sweet than lemony. So Titus didn't love that one. This is a clip of me making the, you know, just traditional lemon meringue pie. So I'm gonna link that video down below for y'all too, in case you would rather have that one than the sweeter version. <laughs> They're both really good, but you can see this one, it's a little more yellow and it's also a little more gel-like than the other one. The other one is more puddingy textured than jelly, gel like. Anyway, now we're gonna move on to a fun one that the kids can help you make Peeps Brownie Mud Cups. Tonight for movie night, we're gonna make something movie fun night. with all of this. I love movie night. Yeah, and this Dolly's Fabulously Fudgy Brownies. We're gonna make brownie cups, kind of like dirt cups, but they're gonna be brownie, let's call them brownie mud cups. That sounds fun. Mom, I'm gonna have that one. You wanna try that one? You want that one on your mud cup? <laughs> They're gonna be fun and peepy and springy. We're gonna go ahead and make the brownies so they can be cooking while we're eating and then cooling down while we're cleaning up and all that. We can, yeah, we'll go ahead and make the pudding mixture too. Ooh, it comes with a little fudge packet, Dolly. You know. We need one egg, half a cup of melted butter, and three tablespoons of milk. We're making like a chocolate mousse. Uh, kind of like we do for that really easy chocolate pie that we make. Hey, Mama, That's gonna be the mud. Huh? Oh, chocolate mousse, yeah. Chocolate mousse cup. 
You came over here because you want to put the egg in? Yeah. A great value. Yeah, we went with twist and shout. Cause twist and shout. <laughs> Let's see if they'll make you twist and shout. I'll they take were, a bite of them. They were half the price of the name brand Oreo, so. Is it an Oreo? Uh-huh. Okay. All right, we've got the egg, melted butter, milk, and the brownie mix. We gotta add in our fudge packet, and we'll get these in the oven. Uh, Daddy, I probably put it in the sink when I came <laughs> in. Did. I'm sorry. Did. I'm so sorry. <laughs> when I see dishes laying around, I start collecting. If somebody's body is not attached to it, I start collecting them up yep. and taking them to the sink. And you got dirty clothes on, so we'll put you in the dirty clothes. <laughs> Okay y'all, so we just made the brownies, just like the box said, and while they were in the oven, we made the chocolate mousse. I just did the really simple one here where you use boxed um, instant chocolate pudding and thawed whipped topping. You don't use as much milk as the box calls for. Uh, like I said, I'll have all these videos linked down below so you'll be able to go and look at the recipes. But yeah, you just make this and put it in the refrigerator while the brownies are cooling. Probably need a few more, here's some more. They all fit. <laughs> no. We're stepping. Mm. Stepping. Mm. No. Oh. oh. Now press it. Oh. Alright, CC wants to press in a minute. Yeah, this is the dirt. So we're gonna get a spoon. We made dirt! We've got blue peeps, yellow peeps, the dirt, crushed up twist and shells. Grass. grass. It's bubblegum grass. Yeah. And the eggs. Now, what are we missing? And the peeps. Oh, we gotta get the brownies. First of all, let's taste of Dolly's brownie and see how it is. Hmm. Pretty good. There's the brownie. Now we get our chocolate mousse. Drop in the chocolate mousse just like this. You put the twist and shout dirt. And then you can put whatever you wanna put on top. We can put a little grass, put a yellow peep, and I'm gonna put a little pink egg beside it. There we go. Now, we're gonna make the to die for carrot cake. All right, y'all, the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and crush up this pineapple. Since I have pineapple tidbits, we need them to be crushed. So I'm just gonna use this little mini food chopper. We need one cup of crushed pineapple. So I'm gonna get a cup out of here, and you don't wanna drain it. You wanna leave the juices in there. Here's a cup, we're just gonna put it in here. We're gonna put the pineapple into a bowl and go ahead and crush up our carrots. Okay, chopping the carrots. All right, and of course, if you just go ahead and get shredded carrots and the crushed pineapple, you can skip this part. I'm just using what I had here. All right, so we're gonna mix this cake up in three different parts. For the first part, we need a cup and one fourth of a cup of unsweetened applesauce. And then we need a cup and a half of sugar and three eggs. So we're gonna let this mix on low while we get the other stuff ready. And it might help if I plug it up. I do that every time almost. There we go. Now for the dry ingredients, we need two cups of all-purpose flour, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, one teaspoon of baking soda, half a teaspoon of salt, and a teaspoon of cinnamon. Now we'll let this all mix. All right, now we put in the carrots. This is about two cups, the pineapple, and one cup of coconut flakes. Last thing, a teaspoon of vanilla, and you can put nuts in here, like pecans or whatever you wanna put. I'm out, I didn't realize I was out. Usually I have some pecans, but I'm out, so we're gonna leave those out this time. I'm just gonna go ahead and use this to stir this since I already took my thing off because that's all you have to do is just stir it together. So I'm just gonna spray and flour my pans here. And you can also put down some parchment paper if you want to on the bottom. So now 
now I'm just making the frosting for the cake. This is just the regular cream cheese frosting that we make with cream cheese, butter, powdered sugar. I think I put a little bit of vanilla in there. It'll be listed in the recipe. But y'all, this cake, I'm telling you, I'm not sure you'll ever want another carrot cake once you try this one. I've made other carrot cakes since this one and none compare, none compare to this to die for carrot cake. It is wonderful. And we cannot leave the Jell-O Pope cake out of this video. I know y'all have seen it a lot of times, but it is probably the number one family favorite cake, especially for spring and summertime because it's cold and just wonderful. I'm going to have the video. There are several of them, but I'll have some video of it linked down below. This was around Christmas time here that we were making it, but yeah, it's just the white cake mix. You poke the holes, you put the jello. You can use any flavor jello. We actually have another poke cake later on. Actually, a couple of poke cakes in this video. Anyway, you can use any flavor jello, but there's a cake that I think is even better than this one. Stay tuned for it. It's coming in just a little bit. It's easier to make than this one, and I think that it's better. I'm pretty sure in a taste test it would win over the Jell-O poke cake. I'm putting vanilla pudding here. A lot of people don't do that with these poke cakes, but it makes it really creamy and good. You can leave it out, though, and just go straight to the whipped cream if you want to. <laughs> Up next, we have another really fun one for the kids. These were movie night treats, I'm pretty sure. Carrot patch cupcakes. We ready to make some cupcakes? Yeah. Who wants to put Cheeks. the... You cannot talk. <laughs> Who wants to put the liners in here? Um, me. Okay, here's some for Manny. Here's some for Cece. Y'all put those in. Okay. okay. I think we are missing some. You're missing some. I think they're all right here. <laughs> These are going to be carrot patch cupcakes. So we're just using a chocolate cake mix. And we don't have Oreo cookies for the dirt hey, part. I got the another one. I forgot to get the Oreo cookies. We can fix that. I'll show y'all what we'll do. We did it. All right, Manny put in the water. We need three eggs. Cece, you want to get the eggs? Yeah. Ooh, and make the good bubble. <laughs> All right, now we need half a cup of oil. 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 Yeah. Here, I can hold this, Daisy. That's why I don't want to do it slowly. I want to do it fast, but I don't want to. Okay, we got the cupcakes in the oven. I washed these strawberries and I'm just sitting them on some paper towels here to dry because we need them to be really dry. We're gonna dip them in these white melting wafers. First, we're gonna color this orange. So we're gonna melt it, color it orange, then we're gonna dip the strawberries in it and they're gonna look like little carrots. The cupcakes are done. We're gonna take the end of this ice cream scoop and make a hole in the middle of each one. So we're just gonna gently Press down there, make a little hole. That's where the carrot's gonna go. We've got the white candy wafers melted here and we're gonna put in a little bit of red and a little bit of yellow food coloring because we didn't have any orange. Okay, so while the strawberries are drying, we're gonna go ahead and crumble up two of these cupcakes and that's gonna be our dirt since I forgot to get the Oreo cookies. Okay, also, I forgot, I was gonna take a little sandwich bag and we're gonna drizzle over some more of our orange stuff here just to give the strawberry carrots a little bit of a textured look. So here's how we do it. I'm gonna show them one and then I'm gonna let them make their own. We take the frosting, we just have chocolate so we just put the frosting all over the top and I made a little indention for where the hole is. We're gonna dip it over in our dirt here, just like that. And then we put our strawberry in. They're already starting to dry onto the plate. And there you go, carrot patch cupcake. Aren't they cute? Now, which carrot do you want? It's not really a carrot, it's a strawberry. That one? Very good. Here 
here's another one that's a fun movie night treat and it actually requires no cooking at all it's just a movie night Easter popcorn board you just pop some popcorn get some different Easter colored treats put it all out on the cutting board and everybody's happy Next is one of my favorites and it's very easy. It's a creamy coconut cake. We're gonna go ahead and make a cake. It's gonna be a coconut cake, a dreamy coconut, dreamy creamy coconut cake. I just made that name up. I'm backing up and Sissy's foot with there almost fell. I'm excited because when I was thinking about this recipe, I was like, it'd be nice just to have a white cake mix. You know, it'd make it easier, quicker, but I didn't think I had one. I came over to the baking cabinet. Guess what I had? I had one. So we're just gonna use this white cake mix, but we're gonna jazz it up a little bit. We just came in and Sissy put on a Max and Ruby, y'all. I think I know every single episode of Max and Ruby by heart. Somebody's alarm is going off. Whose alarm is that? It's Tides. Come on. So anyway, yeah, Max and Ruby. That's where the salt and pepper song came from. Salt and pepper, pepper and salt. Number one hit. What is this? <gasps> like a car? It's like a car. All right, Cece's just going to mix this up in the bowl because she loves to stir. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to put pretty much everything the box says. There's the T-Rex again. Thank you. The box says one cup of water. We're just gonna put half a cup of water and the other half cup, we're gonna use coconut milk. Let me find that for you real quick. So that was half a cup of water, half a cup of coconut milk. Okay, Cece, you can put in the egg whites. Okay. And then we just need half a cup of oil. Yeah, that's fine, it's just a little bit. All right, Cece's doing that. I'm gonna pour in just a little bit of cream of coconut. This is the good stuff, y'all. It's the Coco Lopez. There we go. That was probably just about a fourth of a cup, maybe. Oh, this is gonna taste like a little spring. Mm -hmm. Got all this coconut. Mm -hmm. Oh, you want that? really good right there. <laughs> it's fat free. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm getting the cake pan ready. So that's it for the cake mix. We're just gonna pour it into the pan. It's going in the oven, probably just about 13 to 15 minutes until a toothpick inserted comes out clean or a fork or a butter knife or just until you know it's done. <laughs> We're gonna make the whipped cream for the cake. It's cooled down now all the way, so we are ready. This is almost a whole 16 ounce carton. All right, so we're just gonna whip this up. I'm gonna add a little bit of the cream of coconut in here to sweeten it instead of putting any sugar or anything. So I'm gonna let it whip first, then we'll add some of the cream of coconut. I have lots of taste testers over here. What do you think? Can you taste the coconut? Stuff? Yeah. Yeah. I still can't it's taste good. it. I'm gonna put a little more. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna poke just a few holes in the cake. This is not like a actual poke cake, but we are gonna poke a few holes and put a little bit of the liquid part of the cream of coconut on here and just spread it over the top so it kind of seeps down in there. It's a little bit of a poke cake. So we'll just pour that over the top. Spread it around. So I've got the coconut lightly toasting in the oven. We're just gonna spread on the whipped topping. Keep checking my coconut. So it's a little while later now. All the rest of the family has already tried the cake and they keep saying how good it is. Now we are about to give it a try. I don't know if y'all can tell, but there's a little bit of a darker layer right here. That's where we poured on that cream of coconut. I think that part's gonna be really good. Let's see. Y'all, 
That is so good and it tastes like a homemade cake. Like you would never know that was a boxed cake and it was really easy because we just, you know, changed a few things, added some cream of, I don't know, it is good y'all. It is so good. This next one, also very easy and another one of my favorites, old fashioned banana cream pie. This is called an old fashioned banana cream pie. I'm not sure really why it's called old fashioned because when you think old fashioned, you think, you know, made from scratch, homemade yummy. pudding and everything. You think it's yummy. <laughs> yeah, you think it's yummy. But this one is really, really easy. It does look very old fashioned though. Maybe that's why they call it old fashioned. Looks like you spent a lot of time on it. So we have the graham cracker crust. I'm just gonna sit it over to the side for a minute. We're gonna bring over a bowl and put in this whole package of instant vanilla pudding mix. This is a 3.4 ounce pack. And we're putting in one cup of milk, just one cup. The box I think calls for like two or three for that size pudding mix. Where's your milk? I think it's in the refrigerator. Okay, we're gonna put half a teaspoon of vanilla. This is gonna get really thick as it sits because we only put the one cup of milk. So you wanna work kinda quick here. Get that vanilla mixed in and then we're gonna fold in one container of the thawed whipped topping. Now I have a made from scratch banana cream pie in that thing, y'all. Oh my goodness. It is amazing. It definitely takes a little more time than this one, but it is worth it if you have the time. I'll link that video down below. It definitely tastes like you just walked up into grandma's house. There's still a few little frozen spots in my cool whip there. Okay, now we're just gonna sit this in the refrigerator while we slice the bananas. Sissy's gonna do that. Okay, so I think we're just gonna need two bananas instead of three. Okay, we're ready to layer this up. We're putting in half of the pudding mixture. Now we're gonna put a layer of bananas. Now the rest of the pudding mixture. Okay, the last thing is more whipped topping on the top. And you won't use a whole container, you know, you just put just enough to cover the top and then this is going in the refrigerator for at least two hours. Ours will be in there longer than that but you want to refrigerate it at least two hours before you try to slice into it. I'm trying to decide if I want to do the peaks or the waves. I think we'll go with waves. Looks summery like the ocean. Sissy is now placing the mint leaf on the top. Perfect. See that? People will think you spent all day in the kitchen making this creation and it only took 10 minutes. <laughs> well, it's gotta go in the refrigerator for a while, but it only took you 10 minutes. Y'all don't go anywhere. We're only halfway done and a three layer strawberry cake is up next. I'm in here this morning getting some strawberries ready for a homemade strawberry cake. That was Titus's Father's Day dessert request. Everybody else is still asleep right now, so I'm whispering. That's another reason I'm just slicing these strawberries up. If everybody was awake, I would use my little mini food chopper, but it's pretty early in the morning, so I'm just gonna cut them like this. And then we're gonna get these in a pot and they're gonna cook on the stove top for just a few minutes. I almost stayed up last night to do this, but we went to bed pretty late. We stayed outside for a long time, but now I'm wishing I would've just done it last night. <laughs> pour these in here.
here, here it comes. comes. This one is a fun one, y'all. It's another Pope cake. It's an Easter one. We were actually out of town for this video, and we baked this at the house we were staying at. We were playing at a church about four hours away. So when we got to the town, we went to the grocery store and got some stuff to make for supper and breakfast and to make this cake because I can't remember if it was actually Easter Sunday when we played here or if it was just sometime around Easter, but they were having some food and stuff after the service. So I wanted to bring something and we made this Easter poke cake. So you start with the white cake mix, just like with the Jello poke cake. Um, and then whenever you get the batter made, you just separate it into however many colors you want. You separate it into that many bowls. We did three, pink, purple, and blue. And when you get all the batters mixed in with the color, you just put it in the pan together and swirl it around, make it like, you know, a marble, looking like a marble cake. And then you bake it. And instead of using any kind of jello for this, you just use the pudding. We just use vanilla pudding. So look at baby Manny, he's so cute. Anyway, you poke the holes in the cake, big holes since you're going straight with the pudding here. And then you just spread the pudding on top whipped cream and then you can put some kind of sprinkles it's really pretty i didn't show the cutting into it because we took it to the church you know so i didn't want to take it with a piece missing but anyway it turns out really pretty when you cut into it and all the colors in there it's also a fun one for the kids to help you make because they love to see the different colors when it gets finished up next is the one that i was telling y'all is better than the strawberry poke cake it's a strawberry fluff angel food cake it looks really good so in this bowl we put this three ounce pack of jello and one and a quarter cup of boiling water. Now we're gonna put this whole container of whipped topping. Mine's still just a little frozen in the middle, but this boiling water should take care of that. Okay, I'm just gonna let this sit here. I think that boiling water will keep melting that down, even if there are little chunks of Cool Whip though. That's not gonna hurt my feelings. Let your Cool Whip thaw completely though, if y'all want to before y'all make it. Now we're gonna chop in some strawberries. Very overboard. Okay, we'll get all that mixed together. So now we just take this angel food cake, break it up into pieces, and add it into the bowl. We only need 13 ounces, and this one is 18, so we're not gonna use all of this. And it is easier with this angel food cake, y'all, just to break it up. I can't remember what were, me and Titus were making that fruit trifle, I think. And I was trying to cut it at first, and then I was just like, forget that, we'll just break it. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just gonna pour this into this Baked With Love dish. It's like an 11 by something. You don't really need a nine by 13, that's gonna be too big, but an eight by eight might be a little small because we're gonna put more Cool Whip on top, but my other one, just like the one I used a minute ago, it's still a little frozen in the middle, so we're gonna let it keep thawing out, and I'll just go ahead and make this part and put it in the refrigerator, and then when that Cool Whip is thawed, we'll put a layer of Cool Whip over the top. his favorite things to say these days if he doesn't want something you ask him if he wants it he says it's not his thing this is very good I was a little concerned I must be honest I was a little concerned whenever I mixed everything together and had just the strawberry stuff in here I was you know I was afraid it was gonna just be all mushed up because it looked like it was 
But once it sits in the refrigerator for a few hours, it firms up and it's great. Especially when you put the Cool Whip on top. I mean, look at it, it's great. Are y'all ready for this? I would go as far as to say that that is better than the strawberry jello poke cake that Titus has loved for years. I think that's better. It's, I'm pretty sure it's better. I mean, we'll have to wait and see what he says about it, but I am pretty sure it's better. Jonah's back for thirds. What do you think? Is it better than the Jello poke cake? It's right there with it. <laughs> I'll tell you the truth. What are you gonna do? That ain't hard to eat right there. Mm -mm. All right, y'all, now we are moving on to some pretty pies. This is a confetti pie and a fluffy key lime pie. I had a request to make a key lime pie not long ago, so here you go. It's pie time. The first one we're gonna make is the fluffy key lime pie. So I have a fourth of a cup of water coming to a bowl over here, and we're gonna put in this one pack of sugar-free lime jello. That's it said to get sugar-free, so that's what we got. Now the boiling water. All right, so the recipe said to get two containers of key lime jello, just, I mean, not jello, <laughs> yogurt, just um, the regular kind. I ordered that from Walmart. They substituted and gave me two more of the key lime whips. This is gonna be a really fluffy pie, so I'm thinking that the whips will work just fine. But just in case, I'm also gonna put in just about two tablespoons of this vanilla Greek yogurt just to give it a little bit more of a thickness because I don't want it to be so fluffy that, I don't know. I was gonna go to Ingles and get two more just regular key lime yogurts, but I forgot. So we're just gonna go with this. I'm just gonna put a couple of tablespoons and then we're gonna add both of the key lime whips. This is a very easy pie. Now we mix all of this together. Put in one eight ounce container of thawed whipped topping. So we just fold this in and then put it in this graham cracker pie crust over here. Jonah came in just in time to get the rest of that. All right, let me wash the little lid real quick. That one was very easy. This one, this next one's pretty easy too. It's just, it's got a few more steps. Okay y'all, so this one has a sugar cone crust. So I have this box of great value sugar cones. It says that we need two and three fourths of a cup. I hope that one box is enough for that. Got our melted butter ready. Now we've got the crushed sugar cones. We're putting in half a cup of melted butter and two tablespoons of sugar. This is the one I'm most excited about, y'all. It's gonna be so pretty. I mean, the key lime one's pretty too, fluffy and green and all. But this one, I think it's gonna be really pretty, I hope. It looks really pretty in their picture anyway. I sprayed a pie plate, so now we're gonna go ahead and dump this in. It said to press it into the pie plate with a glass, so we're just gonna do what it said. And it's gonna go in the oven, which I forgot to preheat. There we go, so when the oven is ready, we'll put that in for 12 to 15 minutes. So in here, I have a fourth of a cup of cold water. We're gonna sprinkle in one pack of unflavored gelatin. Let's mix that up a little bit. We're gonna let this sit for five minutes. So in here, we have two blocks of softened cream cheese. We're gonna put half a cup of sugar, and we're gonna go ahead and mix those together. Okay, the oven's ready for the crust, so I'm putting it in. Okay, I'm gonna scrape down the sides, and then Cece's gonna add in two cups of heavy whipping cream. So we've got one cup in there. She's gonna pour in the other cup in just a minute and we need a teaspoon of almond extract. While this is mixing, it's said to heat up 
the gelatin for 10 seconds in the microwave. Okay, the last thing we do is add the sprinkles. Y'all are doing a great job. Okay, you want to stir them in? Okay. Yeah. You want Cece do it? Okay. <laughs> do it, Cece. While we're waiting for the crust to come out of the oven, I'm gonna have to let it cool down for just a little bit. So I'm gonna stick this in the refrigerator while we're waiting. so good y'all especially the key lime one was outstanding and the confetti one is just so pretty it has a little bit of a cherry taste from the almond extract it's so pretty and that cone crust is amazing the cone crust I said in the video would be good with the key lime I actually think I might make that for Easter this year because it would be so good <laughs> Next, we're making another pie, and this one is probably one of my favorites. Again, a coconut cream pie. Cece's putting in three cups of half and half in this pot, and then I'm gonna turn it on low. Now, we need two eggs, Cece. I'm putting in three-fourths of a cup of sugar, and I have this on low heat now. Next, we need half a cup of all-purpose flour. She's pouring in the eggs. A quarter teaspoon of salt. You wanna get that? Yeah. Just drop it in. Good job. Okay, so we've just got this on, it's kind of in between low and medium heat. And we're just gonna keep stirring it until it comes to a boil. Then we'll remove it from the heat, put in a teaspoon of vanilla, and almost all of our toasted coconut. We're gonna save a little bit to put on top at the end. But we won't do that until later because it's gonna go in the refrigerator for about four hours. That's why I wanted to go ahead and get this made first so we can get it in the refrigerator. Okay, y'all, approximately 50 years later, we are about to come to a boil. It's starting to get thick. You do have to stay right here with this, y'all. I'm telling you, if you decide to make this pie. Okay, we've got some bubble action. We're gonna remove it from the heat. We're gonna put in almost all of our toasted coconut. Just gonna save a little bit for the top later on. Oh, we gotta put in our vanilla. One teaspoon. This pie is so good, y'all. I'm just putting some whipped cream on top here. It's wonderful. I love those cooked pies. Um, this one is kind of like the other banana cream pie that I was talking about, only you put bananas instead of coconut, and they are great. But if you want something that you don't have to cook on the stove top or you don't have to bake, you still want something really good, we have a lot of those in this video, and we have some coming up next. A dreamy coconut cheesecake happens right now. Welcome to Friday, everybody. It's time to make the desserts for this weekend. The kids requested cherry cheesecake, and we're also gonna make a coconut cheesecake. These are easy, quick. Y'all have seen us make the cherry one a few times, but this coconut one is brand new. So first we're gonna make the whipped cream. You can use Cool Whip here, but we have lots of heavy cream and no Cool Whip, so we're gonna make our own. We need enough for two pies, and I think I wanna put a little bit of whipped cream on top of the coconut one, maybe. Pour that whole thing in, Cece. Where are my sunglasses? Uh, I think they're in the van. Okay, so this is gonna make a lot of whipped cream. I'm gonna go with half a cup of sugar. 
and we'll go ahead and let this start mixing. Sissy, you can start that. Start it on low, you know, at first. Mm -hmm. And I'm just gonna put in a little bit of vanilla. Okay, Sissy put in pretty much, that was about a teaspoon of vanilla. It was what was left in that little bottle. So we're gonna transfer the whipped cream into this bowl. Like I said, it made a lot. We need the, you know, at least two eight ounce, what, two eight, yeah. hang on. What now? I'm sorry. Hold on, everybody. We need what would be at least two of the eight ounce containers of Cool Whip, which we see is definitely that, plus some. So we don't have to worry about washing this because we're about to put some of this in here to mix with this cream cheese anyway. So we'll just put it back right there. For the coconut one, we need eight ounces of whipped cream, coconut, and this is actually, we're gonna toast some of this. So I'm gonna put just, we just wanna toast enough to put on top. That's enough right there. I've got the oven on broil. We're just gonna put it in here. We're gonna set a 45 second timer because it does not take that long. This is cream of coconut. It is wonderful. One eight ounce block of softened cream cheese. We're gonna go ahead and put that in here. Since we're using the cream of coconut for this one, we're not gonna need to add any more sugar to this cheesecake, the coconut one. We're just gonna put this in. Check our coconut flakes. They're not quite ready yet. And that should be good. That's about a fourth of a cup of the cream of coconut. They're having secret conversations. <laughs> so we've got the cream cheese in there, a quarter cup of the cream of coconut. Now we're gonna put in what would be an eight ounce container of Cool Whip. I think that's about right. Does that look about right to you? Oh you just... yeah, that looks perfect. Now we mix all this together. Oh, <laughs> there you go. I almost forgot, we gotta add in a few of the coconut flakes, and these are not toasted, just a few, CC, maybe a couple more pinches there. Let's see if that tastes good or if we need a little more cream of coconut before we transfer it to the pie shell. And we're just using graham cracker pie shells for these. You can do homemade if you want to, if you're feeling that. Really good. That's what it means. If you throw the fork down, that means it's really good. <laughs> That's gonna be great. So we're just gonna pour this right into this pie crust. We should call this dreamy coconut cheesecake. Or what about Caribbean? There you go. Coconut cheesecake. Let's call it that. We're gonna do the waves with this. Ooh, the waves. Whipped cream, yeah. We sprinkle the top with the toasted coconut, and this one is done. People are gonna think you spent like hours making this and it took just a few minutes. All right, for the cherry one, same feeling, eight ounce block of cream cheese. We will put a quarter cup of sugar since we're not putting in any, you know, like the sweetened cream of coconut stuff went in the other one. So we'll put a quarter cup of sugar and the whipped cream. Okay, so for this one, I'm gonna kinda go up a little bit on the edge here, make like a little, almost a little pool for this cherry filling to sit in so that it doesn't overflow and make a mess. Make a little ridge there. All right, now we just take some cherry pie filling, put it right on the top. This is this done, Mama? It's done. Absolutely wonderful y'all both of those amazing and like I said these are no bake no cook just put them together real quick but you can make them look like you know they took you a little bit of time but we know they didn't take any time at all <laughs> and the last one before we get back to the blackberry preserves pound cake is a toasted coconut lime cheesecake now I have this big box of lime jello you don't need the big one 
this was just all that Walmart had was the big size. So I'm only gonna use half of this pack. Water is ready. We're gonna go ahead and pour it in. Go ahead and mix that. Make sure all the jello is dissolved. And I'm just gonna put this in the refrigerator while we make the other part. We are about to get another thunderstorm, it looks like. We already had one this morning. Okay, over here we have the softened block of cream cheese. We're gonna put about a quarter cup of sugar, maybe just a little more than a quarter cup. And we're gonna go ahead and cream this together. Okay, now we're dropping in just a drop. I'm talking about, boom, just that much of the coconut extract. I don't even know, a sixteenth of a teaspoon. It was tiny, just a drop, that's all you need. <laughs> Now we're gonna squeeze in some lime juice. I just cut off a little less than half of that lime. We're gonna squeeze this in here. We're gonna get just a little bit of lime zest from this piece. You don't need a lot. We just want it to have a few little specks of that darker green throughout. Now we're gonna pour in the jello mixture. I'm gonna mix this in and then see if I wanna add the rest of it. Might not use all this. Okay, yeah, I think that's gonna be good. I used a little more than half of that Jello. This is going in the refrigerator for several hours, so it's gonna have time to set up in there. I just don't want it to be too soft, so I'm not gonna take my chances on that whole Jello thing there. We're just gonna go with a little more than half of it. I've got the oven on broil, so I'm gonna go ahead and put a few of these coconut flakes just in this pan, just like that. I'm just gonna stick them under the broiler for a couple of minutes. I'll set a minute timer and we'll just keep a check on them. All right, we'll go ahead and add in the Cool Whip. And this is thawed. I can't remember if I told y'all that or not. It's completely thawed. Whoops, there's my coconut timer. Uh, yeah, we need at least about 40 more seconds there. decide what I want to do here. I already have the coconut toasted, but I think I'm going to wait. I'm just going to put the pie in there like this and let it set up. And then I'll put the toasted coconuts in a little container. Whenever we get ready to eat it for dessert tonight, I'll take some whipped cream. I have some, you know, whipped cream in a can and we'll, you know, put some little whipped cream around the outside edge and then sprinkle on the toasted coconut. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. So I'll just cover this and put it in the refrigerator for now. Amazing. That's all I have to say. Amazing. It is so good. <laughs> it's like the perfect creaminess, fluffiness, wonderfulness. It's great. But as you can see, as it sits for a little while, the canned whipped cream, you know, starts running. So that's why you want to wait and do that when you're ready to serve it. Or even you could, you know, do that per slice. Like when you slice it, then put the whipped cream on. But yes, it is great. cake is done we're gonna let it cool and then we'll make the glaze that goes on top it's just a powdered sugar with some heavy cream I might add a little bit of vanilla to it maybe you know what I think would be good we'll do powdered sugar heavy cream and a little bit of lemon juice Peach? I don't know why. I don't know. It didn't taste peachy to me at all. Mm. 
But you could use peach preserves and make a peach. A that peach is... cobbler pound cake, what? All right, y'all, that's gonna be it for today's video. What are you making for Easter dessert? Let me know in the comments below.